Hey, welcome to the Continuing Why. Hey, welcome. Hey, hey, hey. What's this Groundhog Day? Hey, welcome to the Continuing Why Maker series. Hey, welcome to the Continuing Why Maker. Welcome to the Continuing Why Makers. Why am I saying that? I don't right know. I, you know, I, I don't know. It's like the new year, and you're already dead. <laughs> welcome to the uh, Wine of the Month Club Classic Series for January of 2019. Is it January? It is January. <sighs> yes, wow. it is January. So as you know, we're doing this a little, a month, almost a month behind because we want everybody to have their wines in in house before we. Uh, talk about them so that's where we we're tasting the january wines we're trying to do this live on instagram but it's not working so tell me ed yes paul <clears throat> the um 40 years ago would be what 2000 uh, 1979 79 2000 yeah look in december you know in november it'll be 50 years since i called on your dad at the at uh, palace Rodriguez wines and spirits half november a century. november wow. half a century later Okay, so um, yeah, the, uh, the the whites the white was uh, Franciscan Chardonnay, which um, Franciscan Chardonnay is Fra still around. Franciscan, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a big deal, big deal wine. Um, Go ahead, okay, so uh, that was made by Justin Meyer, um, who um, also made Silver Oak, which is one of the uh, top drawer cabernets in in, uh, in California. And interesting story, I, most people don't know this, the reason why it was called Franciscan is because he studied to be a Franciscan monk. And then he decided, no, I want to have sex, so he quit. And, and he, he, um, you know, he took another path and winemaking was it. Very nice guy, did a lot of tastings for us. Yeah, that's funny. And um, the Laser Me Duvan, <laughs> the Laser Me Duvan uh, event that, they, that your dad was, um, was uh, promoting was a vertical t a vertical of Hansel and Stony Hill Chardonnay. Wow. <laughs> and it cost $12. <laughs> wow. I know. Those are like I, I, So that that ties into this this article you've been writing in the newsletter about some of the iconic uh, things that are that and I've had this conversation a lot lately for some reason uh, with I had a conversation this morning with a with a chef about uh, Bruce and I are coming and showing my dad the wines and his, you know, being a sales manager for Joseph Phelps and driving down here. That's right. And visiting, f you know, five stores, uh, PV Wines, uh, Wally's, Duke of Bourbon, and then there were two others. Yeah. That was it. And they drive home. That was, that was a sales manager. They were, they were two, they were it. That was all the stores there were, you know. That's crazy. So, um, I appreciate that research, Ed. It's really, really, really good. Well, I'll tell you, I appreciated it more than you do because I'd forgotten, obviously, a lot of these wines and I'm reading it, I'm going... You're you kidding me, I, really? I used to stock those things. I, well, I understand that, but the fact is, I, I don't remember when we were doing these, you know, these incredible Bordeaux's like, uh, you know, Canag Brown and uh, for, for in the regular series. I, you know, those wines are like 70 bucks now. And Dad was selling them for three forty nine, five forty nine. dollars You know, it was just, it was nuts, but it was fun, you know. And there were some great stories in there, too. And the red was a Cote Rhone. Oh, we got to talk about the Cote Rhone. Um, we lay, just did one. Lay something or another. I forgot. Um, uh, lay I never, something or another. That's correct. Les, I, I never, I, I, I didn't know who it was. Well, was it Le or Les? Les, L-E-S. That means after, there was a vowel after it, so was it A or an O or an I or what? Uh, oh, A-U. A les O. Okay, uh, the Les O. Ram Go. See, Ram we're, we're getting close. Like. Yeah, but. Um, les O. And it was so funny because I loved the way your dad would write about the wine and say where it comes from and what the grapes are. Yeah, well, like you're talking to a six-year-old. We still do that. <laughs> well, but but people didn't know anything then, you know. I mean, a lot of them still don't, but they think they do. That's the problem. And that's except it. our customers, of course. Of course, our customers, of course. Right. Well, no, they rely on us. I remember. Well, okay. Welcome to the Classic Series for January 2019. I just was off camera because I was starting our Instagram live feed. Uh, this is Ed Massiana, my associate. Uh, author of Shortcuts and Wine. Somebody asked me the day. This is a true story. Well, I uh, hope yesterday, so. somebody asked me. Yeah. They said, uh, uh, "I had oh, I know. I had a uh, um, an L.A. Times freelance writer in here yesterday. She wanted to see us taste wine. Why did she want to see me taste wine? Because she actually has noticed this confusion and this congestion in the marketplace. Uh, really? All this crap <laughs> wine that's out there from Europe. Uh, the, the the one euro wines that people are bringing in and passing off. So here's what I did. Listen to this." I had opened one of the wines sent to me by a competitor who brought the wine in and sold it to whoever. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Okay. And the wine was um, a Paso Robles uh, Rhone blend. Okay. okay. I opened it up, terrible, bitter. You know, the, the beginning was pretty good. You go, ah, oh, this is pretty good. It's kind of light. And all of a sudden it's like, ah. 
And I opened up the PDQ, the Roan blend that we had. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was doing great. So I said, I want you to taste something. So she, and she's a very good wine palate. So she tastes the, the, the competitor's wine. She goes, oh, you know, it's bitter. I said, yeah, it's really bitter. I said, taste this one. She tasted it. I said, well, they sell ours for 15, we sell ours for 12. I said, this is why you're here because it's, it. then I brought out a bottle of Saturday Night Live, this is a true story, Saturday Night Live Beaujolais. Oh my God. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying Saturday Night Live Gamay Beaujolais like from California. It was Beaujolais from France, okay? Really? So I said, she goes, oh, I love Beaujolais. Oh God. So I pour this glass and I already tasted it. It's undrinkable. 2016, undrinkable. I said, see, Beaujolais can, it's really, it can be a really great wine. Oh, I but, love Beaujolais. But somebody's Absolutely bringing this in for a euro, passing it off as wine. They bought it because it's Saturday Night Live or whatever reason. I have no idea why you do that, but the wine's terrible and they're selling for 15 bucks. Why do we just spend three minutes talking about terrible wine when we should be telling about really great wine? Because I want the, I want the people to understand <laughs> that the, the congestion out there, the Groupon culture, the one-year wines, they taste like one-year wines. That's what you're going to get if you buy them. Uh, and what we do here is weed that stuff out, as I did yesterday, live with a, a wine journalist to help people understand we are here and that's why we're here. All right, Ed? That's why we're here. In other words, we don't think we're I don't know stupid. why you're here. I, I don't that's either. a different question. Okay, this is uh, Back House, which is made by O'Neill. Our friends at O'Neill, which is always lovely to have them around because they make great wines. They make unbelievable wines. What's fascinating about these guys is they, they are the 26th largest winery in the United States. They produce just under 800,000 uh, cases of wine. Wow. Okay. And they're all really, really good. How well, many? They're not we all bought? really good. Well, most of them. I mean, I mean that Red Tree Zin wasn't that great. And oh, like I love the Red Tree Zin. I bought it. And I drank it. I drank well, it. Not the my Red Tree Zin. The Red Tree. Uh, there's another another varietal that I didn't like. Well, whatever. I mean, you can't. They can't all be hits. They were certainly better than those one euro wines. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a great example, because up until the last few years, Pinot Noir was untouchable. I didn't think you could ever get a Pinot Noir in the classic and series anymore. Here's a California version that tastes like Pinot Noir, and that's yeah, the key, right? Exactly. It's, still gonna, it's a very finicky grape, hard to grow, expensive to grow. But here's one that just tastes like Pinot, and that's an important piece, because why would you buy Pinot Noir from South America that doesn't taste like Pinot Noir? Why would you do that? I give up. That's a question. Well, this didn't come from South America, though. It came from no, California. It didn't. And this is great. I love the color. I love the cranberry nose yeah and a little cherry and a yeah. little bit of candied apple and some and some mint it's got a lot of nice things going on here you know one of the things about a really good wine and certainly a great wine is that you open and you taste it and you let it sit in the glass for a while and you like it and then you can come back six or eight hours or the next day later and it's as good or better yeah and this is one of those this is one of those we, wines. we poured this at the tasting the other day with the customers and as the day went on and that bottle was open, it kept developing and being more voluminous. So this is a 97 for me. 98 uh, for me, 15.99 on the shelf, even though the thing says $15.40. And- uh, How's that come up? I don't know. When and was the last time I went to Vons and saw $15.40 for a win? I never, I don't go to Vons. $7.99 <coughs> here, and you'll not find that Pinot Noir like that for $7.99. I'm, I'm telling you, huh, Ed? Uh, well, you just did, and you I'm told everybody you. else. Okay, and next, back to one of your your good friends, my buddy uh, Brian. Babcock. I love I, you. Want know I love Brian Babcock? Well, go ahead. Besides the fact that he's second baseman on my friend's baseball team in Occidental, uh, is that he always makes too much wine, and then he calls us <laughs> to say, "Hey, can you help me?" And we get a great deal on one of his great wines. And I don't, I can't tell you how many Grenache Blanc we've tasted in, from California, but this is a great example of well, the grape. Well, here's, here's what happens. Okay, here's, I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, Brian got a great buy on, this, on, the, on the grapes for this guy. The guy was going to either let the grapes uh, uh, rot on the vine because he didn't have anybody to sell it for, to, or he's going to sell it for almost nothing to Brian. Brian makes the wine. He makes, you know, more than he could ever sell, but he was able to sell it for such a good price and he sold about as much as he could. And then he just came to us and said, I don't, you know, I'll, char I'll charge a half of what I charge everybody else. Well, now all of a sudden it's a great value for us, you know, but that's what happens. I mean, you know, they get to a point where they can't sell it anymore. And, you know, it's, it's not a kind of business where you can go out and fire part of your vineyard. 
they're going to keep growing grapes whether you like it or not. So if you've got too much wine, you've got to get rid of it before the next vintage comes along. And that's that's what happens. A lot of people don't realize that. But it's, Well, no, that's and I, I, I had that conversation this morning, which was if you plant it, you will pick it. If you pick it, you will crush it. If you crush it, you will ferment it. If you ferment it, you're going to bottle it. You can't throw it away anyway along the place. Well, you could. No, you're going to also, you don't have to bottle it because that gets to be really expensive. You can keep it in tank and sell it in bulk to somebody else. But this last vintage, 2018 in California, was so big, now they're starting to talk about the prices coming down. There have been a lot of articles in the paper and on the Internet about the prices coming well, down. Well, anyway. we were talking about that. All these junk wines coming from Europe right now is flooded the market as well. So and they're trying to move them. Well, this ain't one of them. This is absolutely no. gorgeous. I, you know what I like about this Grenache Blanc? Because it does not carry uh, the cloying and, and tropical character that you get from the from the Rhone. You get, it's, it's a California version, right? It's a nice right. lean, crisp version. You still get all the wonderful nuances of a pear and things in there, but uh, it's not like sitting on your tongue weighing it down, you know? No, it's good. It's very, very good. Of course, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Brian's, obviously. I've tasted just about every wine that he's ever made since his first vintage. Hey, what is his label? Oh, I forgot. He told me. You'll be soul struck by the quality no, of the wine. No, it says live in the present. Ooh. Yeah, live That's in the a 96 present. for me. I want to I want to live in the past. Um, yeah, I'm at a 96. It's uh, a 16.99 great uh, great price for that on the shelf, but not at the Wine of the Month Club. It's only six ninety nine. That's, I don't know. You don't? My dad thinks I'm a good businessman. I don't know. Not a six ninety nine. That's not too bright. How long have you been doing this? I know. Thirty years. <laughs> Thirty years this month. But who's counting? Yeah. So here's a. This is a huge coup. No kidding. A huge, huge. A huge coup. A huge coup. I literally had to read it twice to say, wait a minute. Did somebody Hess else wine. use the Hess name, and we're putting it in a classic series? It's uh, a, it's an amazing deal. For one, this is their restaurant only wine, and the reason it's restaurant only, folks, is because there's no UPC code, which means um, they can't put it on the shelf anywhere because there's no uh, code for the retailers, and this allows restaurant tours to know that what they're pouring in the restaurants not you know, being sold in the market as well. But this is a Hess wine. And uh, we were very fortunate. It, the, really, this purchase came down to our relationship with the supplier of the wine, and that's strictly how how you're getting it. But what a great great thing! And it's North Coast, yeah. Yeah. Well, Hess, you know, founded by Donald Hess, a big deal art collector, very very wealthy guy, and built his show place in Napa Valley. Oh, I think probably in the '80s, maybe late '80s, and. We figured, like everybody else, his wines are going to come out are going to be stupidly expensive, and it's uh, you know, and, and, and that's that's going to be the end of it. But they weren't, and they were incredible, absolutely incredible. This uh, this brand used to be called Hess Select, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I remember mm. selling it. That's not it. No, they still make it. This is a separate line for the restaurant called Shirt Tail. Oh yeah, I saw that, but I thought because I didn't see any Hess Select on their on their no, uh, on it. their website, so I figured they didn't make it. But the fact is, we're selling this for for seven ninety nine. Thirty years ago, I was selling this wine for six ninety nine. <laughs> okay, thirty years ago, that's what it, that's what it was on the shelf when I was when I was in retail, and so it it didn't go up a dollar in thirty years. Believe me. <laughs> well, this is a great. Uh, I, I think this is extraordinarily terroir driven. Mm -hmm. You know it's Cabernet, but you know it's North Coast at the same time. Well, and that's what's exciting about it. North Coast can only be Napa, Sonoma, or Mendocino, and you know those aren't bad places to grow. I'm a '99 here. I think this wine is absolutely out of this world, unbelievable for that kind of money. I'm gonna run with that because you're so smart, Ed. Well, that's really the, seriously. That's, a, that's the reason. No, that's, that's. I mean, honestly, that is the reason. I mean, it's the only reason. And, uh, it's sister wine, fortunately, because that was part of the deal, and I can't get into the details of uh, the contract that was made between Hess and the supplier and all that stuff, but just suffice it to say, we are the benefactors, both the Wine Month Club and its members, and this is the, the same uh, uh, brand, uh, but a different grape, obviously. This is their Chardonnay, and I think, and what's this? This is Monterey County, which I think is one of the great... California uh, Chardonnay. I mean, Monterey County Chardonnay no, is for $6.99. Or what? I mean, that is it's all green apples. unheard of. Absolutely unheard of. And it's a signature Hess wine, not a lot of oak, you know, if maybe a little bit, just enough to give it a little spice, but it's got that green apple just floats to the top and a phenomenal finish. 
I'm at 99 points on this too. This is, I should be 100. I, I don't this think is, I've ever tasted. But this is what an expression of Chardonnay for one, and two Monterey. I mean, this is perfect. Yeah, but it's six dollars and ninety nine cents. Well, that's a joke. I mean, come on, you can't buy that anything must be a typo. for that. Is you that a typo? Even, you can't even buy the the fish you're going to eat with this for six dollars and ninety nine cents. Well, you can't. You get three ounces. Uh, well, that's true. Um, those are amazing. Just unadulterated Chardonnay. It's I'm a ninety eight. It's so clean. You yeah. know, it, it's got this cleanness. You feel like you're washing your mouth out, and you can't wait to swallow. You know, really incredible. That is the classic series for January 2019. And we will see you at the Vintner series in just a few moments. A few moments.